Listen, I'm going to sponsor the beer. He's the, yep. he's the most yep. the most sought after person. He came through. Get, and he, he came, came through. through. So, <laughs> um, first off, we want to talk about his company. It's called BitcoinsInVegas.com, and it is the best way to spend your bitcoins in Vegas for their slogan. But it's also got a lot of other uses. So this website, you can also learn about bitcoins, which is you know it seems like everybody knows, but still there is a learning uh, curve to it, and some people haven't got there. And um, it's also a resource, right? So you can find out how to um, join a group that goes around every Wednesday that actually like supports different businesses. Um, they've got a merchant directory and some of the other things you can get on the website. Um, yeah, it's uh, we teach you how to use bitcoins, how to get bitcoins, how to sell bitcoins. Um, we just basically help patrons and and uh, merchants integrate and spend bitcoins. That's our that's our main goal. Oh, you what are these? Uh, it's, it's, this is real this coins. Is, this is real money. I'm it's disappointed. Real in money, you. silver, <laughs> silver and copper, and uh, you know I don't have any gold with me because I don't want to get robbed. But uh, yeah. it's, it's just real money. I like to, I like to keep real money. All right. So the most important thing about bitcoins, I think people should know, is how easy it is to set it up. So we take bitcoins on the podcast now, and you guys are doing the sin shop. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Julian helped us set up sin shop, so we can take donation down for the shop through that, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Really great help with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I can say that it was probably a 10, 15 minute process, especially mm -hmm. accepting exactly. it was nothing more than signing up for a website, a Google mm -hmm. fan page, just some JavaScript. And um, if there is a more that they need integrated with bitcoins, you're also able to be hired for consultants. Is that right? Yes, I have a business called coinbus.com, and uh, if you're a merchant and you're interested in, in integrating bitcoin payment into your system, uh, into your business, then I can help you figure out how to do that. Two real simple uh, web buttons or the custom uh, API pages. And did you end up getting the gold spike set up? We were talking yesterday. We, you know, are, we are working on that, yeah. All right. Nice. Yeah, but yeah, they have to post that up once it's ready so people know. And uh, everybody check out bitcoinsinvegas.com. Follow them on Twitter, Bitcoins in Vegas. And if it's the first time you've heard about Bitcoin, Bitcoins, check out our last episode, episode 26. Mm -hmm. And it'll break it down and how it's changed in the world. And we really appreciate you getting us drunk. Thanks. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. tonight because everybody is having so much fun <laughs> so we want to talk about that too the tech jelly if you guys aren't familiar with was the original like that was the first thing that everybody in this community started doing to get together it's how I first learned about the community and our team and we're just making a push to make sure that it gets revitalized in the same way that everything else around here is so remember that we film the podcast every Thursday at nine o'clock but from seven to nine everybody should go down to the beat and just hang out like this is where all the people are having dollar beers all the people that just hack around and like talk about all the weird space stuff that you want to, but you're always afraid to do. And uh, I mean, it's, well, you gotta admit, it, that's like where the culture feels like it comes from, right? It really like, is. I actually arrived in Vegas a week before, I think, the first jelly. And so it was the easiest way for me to come in and actually meet people and get to know the tech yeah. community here. It was enormously beneficial for me. So I, I like keeping that spirit of it going. Yeah, and they're going to be kind of doing a push every other weekend. So that would be this Thursday, and the next one will be, the next big one will be on July 25th. But every mm -hmm. Thursday is a good one to be there. So get down there. Um, yeah, so let's hop into the news. So speaking of downtown tech, downtown Las Vegas has had a little bit of kind of buzz in, in a few articles, thanks to Chrissy Farr, who's, who gave us an enormous amount of kind of press, and uh, particularly in venture Beat. I liked this article in Venture Beat actually because it talked about how how our scene is. It's obviously entrepreneurial and it's startup, but it's different from New York. It's different from San Francisco. It's different from Washington. And we've had a chance to see some of the mistakes that some of the other startup scenes have made, or, or see some of the difficulties that they've had. And we've been able to almost try and circumvent them before they happen. And Venture Beat actually talked about a bunch of cool things about Las Vegas startup scene that's different from other places, so that we're not trying to emulate that specifically. Um, one little quote that I liked, I can't remember who it was in the article who said this, but they said that they feel like a big fish in the little pond here, yeah. instead of the other way around. And so they get to hang out with the really kind of big names here, and the, the, the investors, and the really cool people. Whereas in other towns, it's just such a, a large pond and you're a little fish and you just sometimes don't get there. 
And so that was a really positive thing that came out of that article. I liked another quote as well, which was about keeping your costs down low when you're actually renting and trying to start your business here, and it's a lot cheaper. And transience in Las Vegas is a thing, right? You know, and it's sometimes viewed as a negative thing, but in the startup scene, that can be really good. If you have tons of people coming in uh, from Thursday to Sunday and they're networking, then you can, that's your opportunity to meet as many people as you can and to get your name out there and to actually meet right. The, the right mm -hmm. people to help you fund your business. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Small fish, big pond. Mm hmm, absolutely. You feel the same way? Yes. Vegas is a great place to start up. I mean, there's been so much press about it. I just, I think the opportunities only increase here. Yeah, so. I mean, you guys were big advocates hey. for it even before us. Um, so tell us about, you have a new product, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, yes. tra So this is Jennifer Goss from Tracky. She is uh, coming today to talk about some new features that you guys have added to your... Yes, and... Uh, Are you guys even a start? Do you consider yourself a startup? You, you know, like we were actually that? having this conversation the other day. <laughs> we were saying that... Um, You're too big. You're big well, fish. I've heard terms that you can be... <laughs> No, definitely not. But I've heard terms that, I mean, a startup can be like three to five years, or you can be a perpetual startup if the culture is kind of a startup culture. But we were talking about, well, we have, you know, certain features, the product, certain business um, strategy that may, might move us beyond kind of the startup mode a little bit. But no, we're still a startup. I, I like the culture of a startup, so I'm going to go with that. But uh, yeah, we just implemented uh, video conferencing into Tracky. So um, our partner is Watch It to Playground, and their um, Watch It is actually a really well-established uh, video conferencing company. They have a whole suite of products, from the free, which is the Playground product that we integrated, um, to the you know branded custom live streaming type um, products, you know for big brands. But we're really excited because we really believe that you should be able to get your work done in one place and one platform, and that's what we're doing is consolidating all the top work tools in one space, and it makes a lot of sense to actually integrate video conferencing because. Um, one of the big problems in our world is still meetings and planning them. Like, as we all know, if you start planning a meeting with more than a couple of people, the email purgatory that you get stuck in is just atrocious. Like, yeah, it totally. Um, so we're all about like trying to ease that process and not only you know the planning part, but also hosting the meeting because we believe that it makes a lot more sense to put more context to your meetings and with you know, the video collaboration side, we're doing all of your work, all of your resources, your files, your collaborators, discussions all in the same place that you're actually hosting that meeting. So it's kind of a, it's a new type of integration that's being done really with Tracky. And uh, we're really excited about it. We relaunched it to a group of our super users and got some feedback, and now it's officially launched. And we thank Tech Cocktail for releasing that news okay. and sharing that with the world for us. So. And, and now productivity is kind of the theme of this episode, but that's kind of at the core of everything Tracky does, right? Is this yeah, where absolutely. All from? Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's like our goal is really to help simplify your life. And I mean, that's very broad, but it, in terms of collaboration, you know, that's just really a group of people working together toward a common goal. But there's all these tools that we use, and you know, I, you've heard me say it before, but we use about nine apps a day to manage our life. And you know, that's good if you have some of your favorite apps, but maybe you don't want to use nine apps to right. manage your life and your work. So we're, we're, again, we're kind of like the anti-app in that we consolidate everything into one platform. I mean, you can use you know, your Google Drive files within Tracky um, and create new files, edit them real time you know, within the same context of the track that you're working on, like as a due date for a project or something with other people. Right. So trying to pull it all together, provide that one platform. We have single button sign on, so you can sign in with, with any social account. Um, so it makes it really easy to bring other people in. Yeah. And but, you know, we use Tracky to organize all the news events and uh, articles that we're going to talk about yeah. during the podcast. So we're probably That's a bad awesome. example of how to use it, but <laughs> no, we definitely there's love no using bad examples. It. That's the yeah. whole thing. It's like whatever makes your life simpler. Yeah. Like that's what we're trying to, to, to provide. So that's why this tool and this integration makes a lot of sense. Hopefully, so we'd love yeah. to hear how you use it. If you're using it, um, reach out to me and tell me um, some great yeah. use cases. So well, we got a new startup coming into town, and uh, Susan, you want to introduce? Well, I don't want to say the name. But it starts with a C, has an H in the middle. Mm -hmm. So Crowdhall, <laughs> very exciting news. They're going to be launching, aren't they? So I should probably get this uh, champagne up. Yes, no? I think so. OK, so we're going to bring Maybe Austin up here. Up. Is he? Is he oh, yeah, right there. Bottle of champagne for you. Okay. But before we're willing to give it to you, we need you to give your elevator pitch. So tell everybody what Crowdhall is. 
Yeah, so uh, at Crown Hall, we are trying to make sense of large group communication. So whether that's a Q&A with a politician and their constituents, or you know, a business asking for suggestions from their audience, um, we help moderate <laughs> and prioritize the, the, be sharp around yeah, the, yeah. the, the crowd communication. Um, so yeah, we've had everyone from politicians, you know, senators hosting Q and A about gun control, to you know, reality TV stars having a Q and A with their fans, to you know, the Irish government is doing a, just a let us know your ideas about how to improve the government type of thing. So so really, uh, you can think of it as as kind of a subreddit that's user friendly and can be integrated with any website um, so you can really own those conversations. Okay, now where do you see it going? Like where is this product going to eventually evolve to and what market niche exactly is it serving? Yeah, so I mean it's, it's a simple tool that really has broad applicability, you know, anywhere from, from classroom settings to, you know, to, uh, you know, entertainment and, and big brands. So really the, you know, the big vision is that this is the way for, um, you know, this is the way to help give the audience a voice. You know, to help take take all the 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 hundreds and hundreds and thousands and millions of people and let them communicate together for a common purpose. So, um, really, I think it it could be you know a real game changing type of technology in government and and uh, you know public policy and stuff like that and stuff like that. And that's where we'd really like to see it go. I love okay. that idea a lot actually because mm -hmm. you know when somebody gets the floor and then they ask a question that no one actually wants to hear the answer to, like mm -hmm. prioritizing questions sounds like the best idea as far as like getting people to actually get down to the stuff that people are actually interested in. Yeah, and that's actually how they came up with the idea. I was, right. I was actually in my, uh, going in my third year of medical school um, and I was watching the, the political debates for the original Republican nominations, and someone in the audience asked, you know, a terrible question. It was super awkward. Then they pulled another bad one from Twitter. There was a softball question. I just thought there's got to be a better way to get mm -hmm. the good content up, and then you know, let everyone else figure it out and choose what's going to be good and what's going to be bad, That's and then just focus idea. on cool. on the good yeah, content. Yeah, cool. stories. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's the thing. Like, according to my notes, I was supposed to let you pop that bottle. Okay. okay. <laughs> I got a little bit of about it, so. That was but, good. but we're not totally done. We still have this scary giant pair of scissors here. Okay. All right. So I'll give those to you since you're not drinking. And uh, we have a ribbon, I think, you can cut, right? Oh, we got it right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to stand up here in front. Oh, All right, so we're going we're gonna, to, for crowd hall, you're going to snip it on three, okay? All right. Guys, you have a big chair. One, two, two three. <laughs> With we events. have some really, really cool events. Uh, first of all, we have Sin Shop, which I can't get away with. <laughs> I'm always going to get away with messaging, men mentioning them. We have Craft Night on Tuesday, and that's on the 16th of July at 6 p.m. And basically, Craft Night is just bringing together everyone that does anything to do with craft discipline. So it could be you could be a knitter, you could be an embroiderer. We've had everyone from Chocolate Fountain rocked up one night, where yeah. someone was actually making sweets. It was very, very cool. And we open the shop up from 6 till 10 p.m. for that. And so if you work on something that's not crafty, you can also turn up because it's an open shop. But we do encourage people to rock up and sit around and work on some crafts. It's so probably a great way to meet people in the community too, right? Because like when you work on a project together, it kind of gives you a chance Completely. to... Completely. So that actually happens every Tuesday. So if you do miss this Tuesday, you can rock up the next Tuesday and we open it up for that. And we get different crafters every time. So it's really, really cool to meet people. Okay. Again, that's Tuesday, 16th. Uh, 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. and that's at Sim Shop. And if you don't know where that is, that's actually on North Fourth Street, opposite Neenopolis. The next event we have coming up on the July 17th at 4 p.m. is the Young Female Entrepreneurs Live Stream. Now we talked to Jackie about this, I think, last episode. Yeah. And we just had Jennifer on, who was most of the founder of this. And it's going to be a live stream, which again is run by Jacqueline Jensen. She's going to be hosting Leslie Libertore from Hot Skillet Productions. And Leslie's going to be talking about how to set up Google Analytics for your business and how to make the most of it and leverage its, its really, really cool features. Um, I think a lot of people use Google Analytics, but they don't quite know how to deep dive into it and actually find out the really useful features. So that's going to right. be really cool. And just for a little bit of background, Hot Skiller Productions is a full service agency. They provide everything from branding to websites to logo design to marketing to SEO. So they're, Leslie definitely knows her stuff, so it should be a good thing. So tune in live. Again, that's a Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream, July 17th at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Okay. 
Next thing we have is the WordPress Meetup, and that's July 23rd at 6.30 p.m. That's going to be held at Work in Progress. Now, Chris Rogers is kind of prominent in the WordPress scene, and he's been providing a series of talks about WordPress, and it's been called WordPress for Babies, which I think is really cool. Um, so it's not for the advanced people. If you are an advanced WordPress user, there is the, the normal meetup after the 20-minute talk. But Chris Rogers will be taking you through how to pick a theme and how to install that theme and configure it, so that's a very useful skill to have when you're setting up a WordPress site. Other speakers that night will be Don Kramer, Michael Kremayan, and Dan Berlo, and they'll be discussing a variety of topics, so definitely rock up and check that out. Yeah. July 23rd. And, and you know, people who know that WordPress group is amazing. Like, it's one, I think it's one of the best ones in the country. We have a huge following, and they talk about some really interesting things. And they've been running for a really long time, yeah. too, so yeah. It's really, really cool for Vegas Tech. Uh, the next event is Snowbot Day in Las Vegas. No, oh. I'm actually a co-organizer. So your eyes perk up for this one? Yeah. Yeah, I like talking about this one. So a notebot, for those who aren't sure what it is, is a robot that is controlled by JavaScript. So there's a library called Node.js, and it allows you to speak to an Arduino over a serial connection, and you can control things just by typing things into your computer with JavaScript. So it's a pretty easy language to get started on. So we're encouraging JavaScript developers to rock up to the Innovation Center. Um, again, that's on July 27th, starts at 10 a.m. And basically, you'll be sitting down, You'll be taking yourself through how to build a robot. We'll have all the parts that are necessary. We'll have popsicle sticks and everything, which will be really fun. <laughs> and by the end of the day, you'll have something that you can control with JavaScript. We have pizza, we have food, we provide all of that for you, and it should be a really fun day. And at the end of the day, your node bot will actually be a sumo bot, and we'll be putting you into like a tournament ring, and you'll have to push the opposition node bot out of the ring. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be very cool. So you can get tickets on ticketcake.com, and it's $15, yeah. and that provides the food and everything for the day. So should check that out. It should be really good. The fight's beginning. <laughs> so we actually have a couple of people here to talk about their events tonight. Um, first off, we have Funding Post Investor Roundtable, and that's with Aaron Sahagin. Sa Sa yeah, I know. Very close. Yeah, Adam was asking earlier, but yeah. <laughs> it was actually better than Adam's, so that's good. Okay. Good. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So that's happening at the Innovation Center. Why don't you tell me a bit more about like what Funding Post is and what you aim to achieve? Sure. So what Funding Post is, it's an ecosystem of entrepreneurs and investors that come together and discuss ideas and discuss what's going on in the investor and entrepreneur community as of today. And really the goal for Las Vegas is to build that ecosystem that has been non-existent between entrepreneurs and investors for several years. So as someone that's come from San Francisco at the end of 2011, I, there was really a need for that here in Las Vegas and that's starting to grow and we're extremely excited to bring that here to Las Vegas. This is very, very cool. Like, it's great to see people that are interested in sort of outside of San Francisco, especially. Yeah, and, and really what's exciting about it, though, it's kind of with, with, with the ribbon cutting, uh, the entrepreneur gave a 30 second elevator pitch, and that's what we're going to be doing at our event as well. It's going to be a 30 second elevator pitch, and it's going to be about 50 entrepreneurs, so it's going to be a lot of ADD going around throughout those pitches. So basically, yeah. they can come and pitch their idea and they get feedback from you guys in the round table. Situation, yeah, that's like that. that's exactly it. But the most important piece of it is the educational component of it, where the investors, the Las Vegas investors, will be able to tell the entrepreneurs, this is what we're looking for, this is what's getting investment, this is what's not, and here's how to uh, polish your pitch. That's so, super, super useful advice. Yeah, if not a lot of people get that opportunity to do that, that should be really cool. Oh, yeah. So, so, so we're totally excited about it, and it's taking place at the Innovation Center, of course. And what's the date and time for that? Oh, July 17th mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there a, there's a fee, right? So there's a separate fee for entrepreneurs where they can save some money, is that right? Yeah, so it's $39 for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. It's normally double that, but since this is brand new in Las Vegas, we're, we're really trying to cultivate that. We are cultivating that ecosystem between investors and entrepreneurs. Very, very cool. Well, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to it. We also have a, another person with us, and that's Jenna Doughton. And you're running an event which is Style for a Cause, right? Yeah. I hear that there's some Project Runway guests. In yes, yes. Tell us about that. Project. So, 
Yes. Uh, do, so, do tell. <laughs> on September 25th, we're doing our second annual pro our Style with a Cause event, and uh, past Project Runway contestants Carlos Casanova and Joshua J. Christensen are going to be part of um, the support uh, and coming to support Style with a Cause this year, which it's being held downtown at Stitch Factory, which Very we're cool. super excited. And we, we were able to get Josh and Carlos on board, and then what we're doing this year is part of the proceeds go to help kind of fund the top designers dreams um, that are working out of the stitch factory to help take their brands and their design firms or names to the next level which is really exciting so um, you can if you want to get involved with the movement you can become a sponsor or you can buy a ticket we have a VIP ticket which has a private meet and greet with the boys and um, that's $200 and you can buy those tickets on stylewithacause.com or you can buy a general admission ticket as well for $100 so we hope to get a lot of people out and just kind of raise awareness because style with a cause is all about it was designed to empower and inspire women through fashion and beauty and so many times we're kind of taught that you have to be skinny or beautiful or tall and it's just kind of a day to forget about all the things that you wish that you were and celebrate that who you are today is really special and amazing and you need to celebrate that rather than beat yourself up about all the things that you really wish were different about yourself it's really important that's really and you, you're working with charities and things like that. Yeah, so we're going to give back to the Stitch Factory, the top four designers at the Stitch Factory, and then we're also giving money back to the Pregnancy Foundation this year. Last year we gave back to um, Junior League, United Way, and... Um, Oh gosh, now I can't remember. Thomas Yeah. <laughs> Junior that's League a, United a, Way, and I can't remember the other one. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. But you're giving back. That's yes, important. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. Well, yeah, Aaron and Jenna have really cool events, so make sure you check them out. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I actually want to do a little visualization trick. It's something we talked about during our pre-interview and I thought it might be helpful for you to get a chance to understand who she is. So why don't you guys just get your imaginations ready, like get your creativity going and try to think about what it would be like if you were in a room and you walked in and you saw there was a girl sitting, kind of looks like a little bit of a Taylor Swift but with like nerd glasses on <laughs> and she's sitting on the chair with her head tilted to the left and there's a robot and there's a scientist and they're both pouring some kind of liquid out of a beaker into her ear so it can go into her brain. <laughs> Um, and you know, of course she finds this like real irritating. So she decides to pick up her purse. Now inside this purse, she, it's pretty heavy. Cause she's like, I'm gonna hit this robot and this guy with it, right? And inside this purse, there's a truck, there's a toy truck and it's a coach purse. And it also has a six pack of Pepsi in there. She's just a total like junkie when it comes to Pepsi. So she decides to swing this coach purse and she knocks the head off the robot. And she's thinking about swinging it again and hitting the scientist. He's got the white lab coat on and everything but he's already peed his pants. Like he's just scared, right? He's scared. And she's got a little bit of heart, so she decides not to do that. Okay, well that's a visualization that's gonna help you remember our next guest. Now, the scientist and the robot represent how our next guest has a mission to help people leverage science and technology to hack their brain to provide and improve more productivity. The, and then, I actually promised oh, you, I forgot part of it, but there's also a game of Mousetrap that she wanted to get back to with her friends, by the way. But the Mousetrap board game was supposed to um, represent her obsession with optimizing processes and workflows for productivity. And the coach purse with a toy truck in it and the Pepsi represents her history of building social media campaigns and working with big companies like Pepsi, Ford, Coach, and a number of other big companies. So, of course, that nerd girl with her head tilted sideways, and she doesn't have the glasses on today, is our next guest, Julia Roy. Thank you. Uh, all right, so I butchered that intro, man. That was rough. I can't wait for it. The game of Mousetrap. It was so clear in my visual. The brain doesn't know the difference between imagining something and actually doing it, so that's why visualization. So. Good. Well, hopefully, I, th I think it's I think it's technique we're gonna try to use a little more. But anyway, so how's the uh, event been so far? Like, how's the trip out to Vegas been? What do it's you think of the community? Awesome. We've been here since Monday. Uh, we were here a few months ago for Superhero U, uh, which was awesome. Um, and when I moved to New York, I, I was the first employee at a startup, um, and we started out at Whole Foods. 
So we're taking like business calls out of Whole Foods in the freezer section, or usually in the lotion section where no one was ever hanging out or being loud. Um, and I loved watching it grow from you know two, three, four, five, and then once it gets a certain size, it loses a little bit of that flavor. But I mean, it's still a beautiful thing. And I think that right now, I mean, everyone that's a part of this, and they're really family. And I can yeah. definitely sense that. I live in New York City, so you walk outside and no one's family. Right. Um, so it's it's really great to to get to experience that. All right. Well, so the, you know, the New York Times article I was talking about us earlier, that was like the most hesitant one. So I can tell they, they got to be, you got to really prove it to them. Yes. You know, they're a little tough guys. All right. Um, do you feel like spinning this wheel here? Because these guests have not been helping me drink this at all. Are any of them Jaeger? No, no, they're not Jaeger. Okay, good. So do I. Oh, good. I thought, I thought you'd be like, yeah, just give it a spin. This is also going to be your lucky number for the night. Let's go ahead and give that a spin. And while you're. Do I spin it this way? Or yeah, you ever played roulette before? You What's gamble that? at all? No. Oh, well, you're in Vegas. This is a good chance to teach. Take this middle thing, give it a spin, and depending on what number that lands on, depends on what. Ooh, you guys spin a little harder. I'm I can't do it. I can't do it. That's I'm not my luck. I'm gonna knock them all over. Oh no, no, you spin this thing. It like spins around the edge. It's a whole ordeal in itself. Ooh, so you got 23. That's close enough. There you go. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 28 is my lucky number. Okay. Okay. So while we do this, tell me a little bit about. Uh, <laughs> about uh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you. I'll okay, tell so, you everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if our brains can be hacked for more productivity, does that take away that kind of human feel? Like, do you feel a bit like a robot when you start working with these startups and start getting inside sure. their heads to making it more productive? It's interesting because our brain works a certain way, and so I got into this by um, I left my corporate job and I do what I used to do in the corporate world from home and it was a year and a half later and I had all these ambitions, I was going to do all these things and a year and a half later I'm sitting on my couch and I had pretty much done none of them. Um, but I read a lot of self-help books and I would go from one, you know, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People to GTD and I would jump from one to the next and I wasn't sticking to any of them and I felt as though after the struggle of trying to stick to a system or a program that was going to make me better, I would... Um, just switch to the next one and think, oh, that's Stephen Covey. Like, he's like that, I'm not like that, I'm not wired that way, you know, he's yeah. that way and I'm this way. Um, so, I started learning about the brain and what I love about the brain is that when you start thinking about and when teams and people start thinking about their interactions with each other, how they interact with their computer, how they interact with their work, based on what's going on in the processes in your head is based on, you know, scientific, you know, it's just, it's just neurons and electrons, you know, firing at different um, so when you think of it that way, it kind of takes the emotional part out of it. Like I'm, I'm lazy or I'm, you know, not good enough, and you you see it a little it's like bit kind differently. Of empowering almost. It yeah. is empowering, and it's also it takes fascinating. Some pressure off you, maybe. It's why like, people love meditation and all that. Taking a step back and and looking at it not from the perspective of, well, if Stephen Covey can do it, I should be able to do it, and why am I failing? But you know, looking at the way that your brain works to better understand, you know, what you need to do that best works for your brain in order to get you to where you want to go. That's good, because I was worried you were just naturally productive, so I'm glad to hear yeah. there was a time when you hung out on the couch. I'm okay. still, it's, a, it's always a struggle, I mean, to, it's, it's hard being a productivity expert and you have like a bad day. Yeah, yeah that's like, true, like, you cannot let it go, there's the clients, right? <laughs> no right to be talking about productivity, but it really is a process, and the best, the thing about productivity that I like to nail home is the best system is one that works for you, so we try to shove ourselves into these boxes of, of different tools and, and techniques when really the best thing that we can do is, is take the best from each that work for us and work for our workflow and workday. Uh, but it just takes some time to, gotcha. to get that together. Okay, so you know a lot about the brain. So tell me about, is it okay to kill one person if it saves two other people's lives? That is a really interesting question and <laughs> one that most people, if they don't know, I think it was... If, this is kind of a joke question, no, by the way. Like, I know you're trying to, like, I know you're trying to, this is like kind of a throwaway. Pe people will do it, but if that person is going to jump and like kill other people, they won't. It's like this weird thing. It's, it's not okay, but people, when like given that like situation, they will, they will do it. Okay, so kill, kill one, save two. Yeah. Before you get too much into the brain hacking, tell me about uh, how do you quantify productivity in general? Like it always seems like something that seems so hard to, hard to measure. Yeah, no, it's a personal thing. I think also, before you get to productivity, you have to figure out what your goals are, um, and then use you know the systems, the best systems and processes for you to get yourself there. So the problem is, is that 
we want to be productive, so like, I'm going to sit in my email all morning. Right. And then you're four hours later and you're in, in inbox zero, but you didn't ship anything. You didn't get anything done, really. Um, so I think that you know the first kind of part is what are your goals and what are you what are you working towards, and then from there what are the I mean the brain works it needs a long term goal it needs a purpose it needs this this big awesome thing that's going to happen but then it needs to break down everything into <coughs> short term goals and then even shorter goals you know tasks that are going to lead to that bigger thing so you have to kind of take that time to build that plan and then each day write down those three tasks that lead you towards that goal. Because if they're just random, if you just think of them the night before, like, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this, um, you can't make that larger connection. It's not likely that you're going to give them on that. Okay, so, so yeah, my next question was going to be about, like, what do you do when you first start with the startup? But I'm guessing that's yeah. it, right? Like, you, you focus on goals, not so much productivity at first. Well, so yeah. everyone loves shiny tools and tips, so... Um, Perhaps. Next question. Everyone, yeah. wants, everyone, like, everyone just wants, like, the icing on the cake. They're like, I don't want to fix the underlying problem. Can you just give me an app or something to, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people track. Track that use so. Tracky and all that. Well, they, they, they have a culture problem and they have a problem with collaboration. They don't trust each other. I mean, there's a lot of issues. And so they think that this tool is just going to fix all their problems. Um, and so what I normally do is I go in and I sit with everyone individually and I ask them one question. What keeps you from doing amazing work every day? And it usually falls into three categories. It's emails, meeting, or project management. And so I tackle the one which I call like the keystone problem, you know, the kind of the one where they call, um, you know, for individuals, exercise and finance are keystone habits. So they found if you, um, you know, lose the 20 pounds you've been trying to lose for, you know, five years or whatever, your relationships get better, you still spend as much money on credit cards. Same thing with finance, which is your finances in order and you feel really good and you're starting to save money for retirement and everything, you know, is in line. Um, you, you know, everything else falls into order. So I try to find what that is in the organization. Is it meetings? Is it email? And really tackle that one because you find that once you, once you really solve a core problem, all the other things kind of fall into place. Okay, well, you know, and now I kind of feel stupid asking the question, but I was, the next question really was going to be like, what tools are you using? Yeah. But I guess we can just preface it with saying like, it is kind of unique for whoever the yeah. person is, but, but specifically for your life, what ended up kind of surfacing to the top? Like, how do you manage your day in a productive way? So I use um, we uh, my 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 partner my my boyfriend we live together sleep together work together mm -hmm. um, I always like to say to make people feel really uncomfortable uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get what that means um, so our client Citrix uh, bought Podio so that's what we use um, I've tried Tracky and I I recommend different ones for different people but I normally find within an organization of anywhere from 30 or more, there's like seven different systems that people are using. So some people are using Pivotal Tracker, obviously, you know, in the, on the dev side, you know, some people are, are using different tools. So um, we try to kind of consolidate it. And I think, you know, ones like Podio and Tracky are trying to do that, are trying to do more. It's got a password. <laughs> screwed. What's your We're password? No, no, that's not. It's, it's not a good time for that. I like your little image yeah. there. I don't even want anyone to guess at it. So let's move on. Next question. Let's get into brain hacking. So um, let me hack your brain and get your password. Yeah, I mean, if I if I stick a pencil up my nose, like where do I press? How do you affect your brain? <laughs> so what, 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 what do you want to know? Just hack, I just want to hack my brain. You know, I mean. Yeah. We, I think that the biggest thing is willpower. So willpower is taxable, and I think that we don't appreciate how limited um, our resources are. So your brain is 3% of your whole body mass. So it's only 3% of the weight of your whole body, but it takes up 30% of your body's energy resources just to run. So you know when you're washing your hair in the shower, and then like 20 minutes later, you're like, did I wash my hair? Right. I have no idea. Did, did I? And you do it again. But your brain does that to save energy because if every moment of your day you had to think about like putting this down so it doesn't hit really hard or you know whatever it might be um, it, you'd be exhausted you wouldn't be able to do more than the daily things of putting one foot in front of the other so that's where habits come in but then they work against us right. so the problem is that we create these bad habits just based on um, I always like to think of it as uh, the powder like as you're gonna go down skiing and it's just it's just white powder you need to pick away so you, you go down one way and you get to the end and you didn't die. And your brain's like, sweet. So you get back up to the top and what do you think you're gonna do? You're gonna go down the same path. You're not gonna go down a new path because that could be dangerous. Right. So even if your new habit is drinking wine at nine in the morning, 
your brain is telling you that like this yeah, is that, cool. that'll get you alive like, for the next this, day. This is this is what we do now, um, and so it's really hard to, to change your ways, but yet your willpower is, is is taxable. So you only have so much of it. So when you try to in the morning, you know, not eat the cereal that you want to eat, and then and then you know exercise when you're really not into it, and, and and you're trying to do all these things. By the end of the day, you just don't have any willpower left. So I think we really have to appreciate that. Although we want to change a lot of these things, you have to kind of choose little small, small steps. So instead of trying to take a whole new route, you're going to take like a little detour, you right. know, at the end. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to start with the little things. That's why New Year's resolutions always yeah. fail because they're just too much. <laughs> right, because too much. You know, we had uh, Jesse Kluver, who's an evolutionary yeah. psychologist, on a little while ago, and yeah, I mean that was that was fascinating to me too. That the fact that it's a finite resource, right? Like you can't think of willpower the same way you do a lot of energies. Like if your body doesn't have an abundance of sugar, if it doesn't have a lot of things kind of going for it, right, right, that's one of the first things it's gonna right, cut off because yeah. it didn't really keep you alive for one yeah. more day. And it's a muscle, it's a muscle. Yeah. So what's interesting is that you can build it over time. So you wanna start with little things and you get more willpower um, when you use it. So if you're trying to go from you know, eating like crap over the holidays to being super healthy starting January 1st, it's just not gonna work. You want to start with, I'm going to eat an egg in the morning instead of oh, my, okay. cheer, yeah. my Cheerios. Or and is that, like, once you identify the goals, is that sort of where you come into play with these, when you work with startups, is that you break down the little pieces and then try to hold them towards, like, you know, the each incremental piece change yeah. towards their goal? So uh, a lot of times it's it's defining one goal because the problem is is that we, uh, we're like, okay, so our goals are, blah, 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 blah. Right. like it's like 10 different goals. And the problem is is that when you have 10 different goals, every day is very confusing. You don't know which one you're actually accomplishing and is that the right one. So the key is to choose one. And that's usually what I try to help them with. Like one mission statement that might include one or two goals, but you need every employee to be motivated towards one thing, because when you're working on something, you need to know: is this achieving? Is this working towards achieving my goals or not? Um, when it's ambiguous, when it's one of ten things, uh, motivation uh, gotcha. drops. The clear definition is really a big clear part. Yeah. Really clear but goals. they have to do that. I can't do that for them. But I try to tell them how important it is. You don't let up on them until they got something clear. You yeah. keep, keep, keep on them. All right, so um, how have you hacked your brain? Like, tell me about your life and like really what you, when you look back on it, what were the big accomplishments where you said, you yeah, know, that's, that's really fascinating and I'm proud of myself for being able to hack my own brain in that sense? I don't know if I have some amazing stories. I've made a lot of great strides forward, I think. I'm a very, uh, uh, so I have, I think we all have ADD. I mean, you can't live in this world and not have ADD. But if you saw my family, you'd be like, that girl must have ADD. <laughs> um, but I'm, a, I'm an, and I'm obsessive compulsive. I have, uh, I've always basically held on to one really, really bad um, habit or another. So I was bulimic for a long time, and then you know I would just basically keep transferring um, these this belief in that like I can't be normal, um, and. What I found is that, you know, meditation really helps with this too, is that this self that's you, like the, the, the everything that you know about yourself that makes you you, is essentially just neurons connected to each other in your head. Um, that's, that's it. Um, and I know, I mean, if you're religious and if you have you know, beliefs, I think that there's definitely, you know, um, you know, that possibility. But what I love is that, you know, who we are is, malleable and changeable and, and everything that we are we've just been conditioned to be that we to, to be that way um, so I think you know getting over my my OCD and obsessiveness it's basically cognitive behavior therapy I don't know if you you know researched that or read or if anyone knows about that it's basically taking what what you're thinking and looking at it as if you were someone else looking at what your thoughts are I really love there's this um, of like third party thinking is kind of well, so he, Yes, it's it's basically without judgment and like without like with compassion and without judgment. It was really hard because you know when you're trying to look at you know yourself with compassion and without judgment, it's pretty much I find it very difficult to to look at my thoughts and say like oh that's cool like what's wrong with you? Right. Why are you saying this? Um, I love this this meditation. This uh, like guru, he was like he was um, he was talking he was helping this woman and she's like it's like I'm in a phone booth with a lunatic and the lunatic has a megaphone. And it's so true because that's what happens in our head. Um, and so, you know, kind of taking a step back and, and being able to take, you know, who you are with a grain of salt. Okay. 
Well, so for the last question, tell me about some of the like the mysteries that you're still working on. Like, what are like when we really think about the things that do make sense? Like, what are the big things that don't make sense that you think about a lot? The things that don't. Make sense. Yeah, like like as far as like when it comes to productivity, like what are the hurdles that like everybody seems to mo like come across? Ego, everyone in their freaking ego. So. I, I, it's so hard because you don't want to be wrong. Like the, you just there's there's I mean it's studied over and over and over again. And I think you know some people are worse than others. But um, especially when I go into organizations that they know that there's a problem, but no one is willing to say like yes things need to change and yes we should change our process and you know perhaps like we started off on the wrong foot or we started bad habits. Well, that's a defensive mechanism, right? It's, like it's you're just like, like I don't want to. If you could get rid of your ego, everything would be awesome. I mean your ego keeps you alive. Essentially, what your ego does is says, like, I am different from, like, I exist here and I need to protect this. So it was, you know, back in the day when you had to run from the tiger, if you didn't have an ego, you'd be like, oh, I want to play with the tiger. Yeah, yeah. Because you wouldn't be trying to protect this being, so right. you run. Um, but now it does that in the same way where you, now our egos just kind of serve this purpose of, like, separating ourselves from others and trying to make ourselves, it's either I'm gotcha. wrong or you're wrong or something wrong is going to happen and I need to protect myself from that because, now it used to be the tiger, but now it's like you know negative feedback, or it's a bad review, or it's you know my employees you know not liking me. Right. Kind so of you got to like justify it or block it out, and those are the things you have to tear down all the time. Yes. So the ego is um, very difficult because you can't really address the ego because the ego will then be like screw you. Yeah. So you have to kind of there's this really great yeah. book called Your Brain at Work. It's by David Rock, um, and he talks about how to interact with people in order to get basically what you want. So it's a little bit of like a manipulation thing where you don't think from your perspective, you think from theirs. It's kind of like where you tell your, you try to get your boss to make them think it's their idea in order to get something through. The inception it's, style. It's like yeah. that with like family and you know, partners and, and work. It's really, it's really good. Okay. All right. So you're talking about this stuff on a podcast now too, right? So besides your website and your Twitter, what's going on with uh, brain hacks and work hacks? So um, Brain Hacks is a podcast that I started and totally didn't follow up on, so it has one oh. episode of so, like, But it's just the beginning of more, or is it dead? It is the beginning of oh, okay, more. Okay, okay. I, just, I tried to take on so much, I got all excited, and I like launched all this stuff, and I, and I haven't um, done a very good job at keeping up. But I do want to do it. That's more of a passion be project good. for me, because yeah. they say that when you learn, the best way to learn is to apply and to teach. So um, if you sit there and read books all day, uh, uh, but don't, yeah. you know, like, tell other people and like make yourself accountable for it. Uh, you learn it, but it doesn't really bake in. You okay. have to actually act it. So that was That's part of your learning. So that, that was podcast is part of you. If yeah. I have to, you know, do this, you know, more often, then I will refine my messaging and I will get better at yeah. really understanding what I'm learning. Um, and then work hacks is, uh, you know, my business. So I you know, do productivity trainings and workshops. Uh, to help companies overcome their bad habits and okay. work better together. And if startups want to get in touch with you to maybe have you come in and help them, yeah, what's the... Yeah, Julia uh, at workhacks.com. Um, and I'm happy to do a chat. Um, you know, typically, uh, you know, the problem is usually pretty clear even to the person, to the startup, to the people in the company. It's just getting those like one or two actionable steps, the things that we can do. Like a lot of times it's meetings. You have meetings and meetings. And the one or two steps is no one creates a meeting without an agenda, with next to every agenda item is the person responsible for talking to that agenda point. And then what is the goal of this meeting? Like what do you want to happen as having this meeting? Because I think we have meetings sometimes without any goals. So right. you just sit there and chat the whole time and it's just a waste of everyone's time. So you have to have another meeting about the meeting <laughs> that you had last week. Right. Um, so choosing design. those like yeah. little like things and just getting some ideas of how you can start to slowly um, you know, make your systems and processes is a little bit tighter and a little bit more succinct. Okay, so follow her on Twitter, Julia Roy, and uh, website, julia.roy.com, and probably Google her too. Probably done a lot of stuff that I didn't know about. So. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate Remember like a flashback, Vegas Tech, don't forget to spell it with the hashtag.